Well, low low GI food is is uh, is basically carbohydrates that uh, that have a, a lower impact on your blood glucose. And uh, and David uh, has actually produced these uh, amazing uh, infographics that uh, show the impact of uh, of food on uh, um, or the equivalent of uh, of uh, sugar uh, on your blood. And um, low GI are certainly less uh, harmful than um, than the uh, the higher uh, GI foods, but uh, they still contain carbohydrate, and uh, and they're still uh, if you are you know, type two diabetic or pre diabetic or, or morbidly obese, you know you probably should be avoiding even the low even the low GI food as well, but certainly the uh, the higher GI food. What are your what's your approach to low GI, David? It's a, it's a very well, the, the glycemic index is a very useful model. It's a model that helps people understand how foods may impact their blood sugar. And if our goal is a, a, a better control, a lower blood sugar, it's handy for patients to know what might put their blood sugar up. And so I see the whole thing as a spectrum, Peter. Most of my patients are on a massive amount of sugar and starchy carbs when they first come to me. So first of all, all I want them to do is move along the spectrum to lower carb. And the, the, uh, a lower GI at that point is really useful, very useful. And for some people, it's all they need. If you're having, I have patients and they may be having 400 grams of carb a day easily. So for them, even if they go down to 120, that's great progress. And some of them get remission of their diabetes. So if that works, great. But for some people, it, it, they, they're better, but not good enough. And they want, they want more. They want to be either slimmer or fitter in some way or a better blood sugar. And for them, they're starting to go into the either from low GI to low carb or even keto. And that's part of the ongoing support they get in the practice to help people personalize the diet to get the results they're hoping for to make the changes that make a difference.